Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's Lodestar's Lending Leaders. We have, as we continue our summer series, uh, we're going to do a very special episode on the Summer Olympics that just wrapped up. Hopefully, all of you watched it. We have our gold medalist, marketing and sales manager, Elena Gardner, um, here to come uh, and once again talk about all things Olympics. Maybe we'll tie it to the mortgage industry, but probably not this week. So hopefully you just enjoy our thoughts on the Olympics. Yeah, I definitely think this is going to be a fun topic to just kind of, you know, it's a major event in the world. Let's talk Absolutely. about it. Absolutely. It was, it was one of those things. It's just like, it happens and then you're like, I don't know what my life is without this. And then it's gone and you're sad. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big Olympics person. <laughs> yeah. Well, t- tell us about that. What's your favorite Olympic event? Um, so I'm definitely for summer Olympics, it's definitely gymnastics for me. Um, I was a dancer for a really long time. So mm-hmm. I kind of, I've tried gymnastics a couple times and it is really, really hard. And also I am very tall for a gymnastics. Yeah. Like I'm about like eight inches too tall to do that many flips. Yeah. You definitely need to be a little shorter to be able to flip that. What, yeah. I think some of is like three ten. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. diving is similar too. that like divers are not generally tall because you have yes. to really, like flip, yeah. you need to be like 14 years old. So you can just like flip around a bunch of times. Yeah. So yeah, for summer Olympics, it's definitely gymnastics. I would say for winter, you know, looking mm-hmm. forward to 2022 is definitely mm-hmm. going to be ice skating. Mm-hmm. Also the luge in a weird way, <laughs> the luge where they like the bobsled, that's what I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. Bobsled. The, um, I think curling is that for the winter Olympics for me. Oh because, yeah. Like, curling is... It feels like a sport that anyone can do. Like you can yes. go to a curling club. It doesn't like, whereas like, I mean, yes, it's hard and we would not be Olympic curlers, but like <laughs> gymnastics just seems like so far out of the possibility of things that can be done that yes. I think it's a lot, it's a lot harder. So I think curling is that for me. Um, and then I would say for the summer Olympics, we really enjoyed trampoline. I think that was always a fun one too, yeah, because like, and honestly, like you're just kind of wishing they fall. Like, I know it's like awful to say, but like, you're like half waiting, they're drifting over to the side. You're like, don't hit, but do I want them to hit? What's going to happen? And, What's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. That makes total yeah. sense. Yeah. I think one of my questions too, is if you don't have an Olympic tattoo, are you even an Olympian? I didn't ever realize so many of them had yeah. tattoos and then every swimmer had a tattoo. Every athlete I saw had some sort of Olympic tattoo. I don't know if some of them are temporary, especially some of the, the more, the, the colorful ones, but there were a lot of Olympic There were tattoos. a lot of tattoos. Yeah. yeah. I like, mean, I get it. Yeah, I, I get it. If I was an Olympian, I would get an Olympic tattoo on a place in my body that everyone can see it forever. That makes sense to me. Yeah, so... I think one thing that we talked about too, that is an idea I've had for a little while is this part of like normalizing the Olympics or like giving you more of an appreciation for them. Because I think, you know, you look at trampolining and it seems easy when you watch 10 people do the exact same thing, but it's not. So I think that like, especially in the news coverage, they have to have some sort of scale. So um, the thing I would like to see is NBC basically has a non-Olympic athlete do every event. Um, personally, I'd like to see the, like, they just rope in like all the NBC like actors for different shows or like the cast of Saturday Night Live because they're people you know, mostly in decent shape. Like how funny would it be? Like you see two people rowing 200, 2000 meters in like five minutes. And then you see how long it would take like Michael Che and Colin Jost to do it, like cursing the entire time. Oh, hundred percent. Right, like, right, like I, or like you couldn't do all of the same things, but like, I just want to see someone try to get up on the balance beam, like just stand on the thing. Like, I don't think you could even do that. Like they do a split just to get up. Like you can't, you can't do that. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it was really interesting. And we've talked about this briefly, but there is a series on the Olympics uh, YouTube channel where it's the try, it's try guys, try Olympics. And it yeah. is a bunch of normal guys trying, trying stuff. And it is absolutely hilarious. Yeah. Um, they did it as like promo for the Olympics, but I think it would have been even better if they had like shown that footage right before their events. Yeah. And then like, here's rhythmic, rhythmic gymnastics. Here's a bunch of normal guys trying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or like yeah. how far could someone throw the shot put normally? Oh, it'd be like three feet. Like 10 feet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So like you'd have to like 
not, you know, adjust some of it for general danger. Like you couldn't have them doing the vault in gymnastics. Yeah, that would be bad. Yeah, but that would be very bad. yeah, I think it would be good because I think part of, I know what we want to talk about too, is the fact that like you get so accustomed to, oh, they're operating at this level. They're doing this amazing thing that you don't realize how hard it is. You don't realize the pressure on people. I think we, especially the way that the Olympics gets presented in the United States, it's gold is just an expectation and anything else is a failure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, especially with the kind of everything that happened with the women's gymnastics team and Mm -hmm. Simone Miles kind of coming out of it and saying, I'm not in the right headspace to do these really, really dangerous routines at the end of the day. Like she is at she, she knows it. She's at the end of her Olympic career. She is quote unquote, the grandma of the Olympic teams. Yeah. You probably saw it like three or four times. Right old age of 24. Yeah. Right old age of 24. She's, she's the grandma. Mm-hmm. Um, but she definitely made the right choice because a lot of times, you know, we kind of put Nastia or, oh gosh, why can't I think of her name? Nastia Lukin. Yeah. It's Nastia Lukin, but I, it wasn't her. It's Gabby the, Douglas. There is a gymnast from now I have to look up like a few years ago that broke her foot on her first mm-hmm. ball, broke her ankle, and she still did the second ball. And it Carrie is like, strong. yeah, Carrie Strong. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She is ex- like, she is so famous in the gymnastics right. world for doing that ball. And in reality, the US team did not need that to get gold. Yeah. She dramatically injured herself doing the second ball. <laughs> I mean, it like, was the final event too. Like it wasn't like the very beginning or anything like mm-hmm. that too. Yeah. Like, and I think there we're, we've come a long way as a culture, I think, to be like, yeah. okay, this is okay. This is amazing. She did so much for her country too. Oh yeah. Simone Biles maybe shouldn't dramatically injure herself. Like, unfortunately in gymnastics, you can hurt yourself really badly. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's part of the problem that I know even for myself, I didn't quite have the appreciation of how dangerous what she's doing is and even calling something the twisties like it sounds a twisties like something you get at a gas station as a drink it's not like yeah i'm gonna snap my neck right like i feel like there's like you need there's needs to be a little more of an appreciation of the danger and like you know people there's metal things and athletes where like a second baseman can't make the throw to first or a golfer can't make a five foot putt missing a five foot putt and falling from 20 feet in the air backwards on your head are two very different things like, I think one of the best examples is Caitlin Ohashi was an mm-hmm. Olympic hopeful. She recently went viral for like her Michael Jackson themed UCLA performance. Yeah. And she talks a lot about how she no longer, she decided not to do the Olympics and just go to kind of collegiate because it's a little bit less aggressive yeah. because she broke her back right. while training for the Olympics. And she was like, it just wasn't worth it to me. Cause I could have yeah. like, yeah, it's like breaking my back is terrible, but like I could have ended up paralyzed. Well, then you think of how people, how large organizations view these athletes from Simone Biles was on everything for the last oh, yeah. three years. It got extended a year, which probably didn't help her. Right. Of like, it's the expectation you're winning gold. You're the face of the Olympics. You're, mm-hmm. you're everything. Like the other gymnasts did really well, but who knew Suni Lee before two months ago? Yeah. Right. Or what Jade Carey, right. These people who, you know, just from the last, like they didn't have the same spotlight on them. Um, and you look at, you know, all the things that happened with USA gymnastics and like, yeah, I'm not really going to risk my life for you guys after how we've I'm been treated excited. for the last few years. So it's, it's such, I mean, for so many reasons, this was a very conflicting Olympics in a lot of ways too. And I think that shows it. And then you look at, you know, some of the high profile mental struggles, of Naomi Osaka too, of not wanting to do, dropping out of, was it Wimbledon or the French Open or both, mm-hmm. um, not wanting to do interviews. And you're like, hey, what's similar between Simone Biles and Naomi Osaka? Like what, look, look at the, who's feeling pressure in different ways than, you know, what's his name, Caleb Dressel or, or someone like that. Yeah, so. and I think we put so much pressure on these athletes to perform at such levels that they can't. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, if you're not in the right headspace to compete, you're not going to do well. Yeah. Like it's as much of a mental game as it is a physical game. Right. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, Simone Biles didn't just stand up for herself at the end. Like she was in a position where everyone knows if she had been able to perform at the level she was able to perform, she would have every gold medal. 
Yeah. It's like not a question. Like they may or may not have won the team all around, but they would have, mm-hmm. she would have won in every event that she competed in. It's not mm-hmm. a question in any of our minds. So I think she's in a really unique position to be like, I stepped back right. because I'm confident in my abilities and also just makes it normal for everyone else. She can do something that's more in many ways more impactful too, hopefully yeah. in the long run. And there's been there been more of it from someone like Michael Phelps, who's been vocal um, mm-hmm. about mental health and things like that. So I think it'll be interesting to see. And I mean, it's tough to imagine for a lot of folks, you know, you the thing that is, you know, the highlight of your life, your top achievement is when you're 18 or 24 or 22. Like that's crazy to imagine. And now even when um they were doing the um, closing ceremonies. You were talking about figure skating. They had Johnny Weir and Tara Lipinski as the announcers. Mm-hmm. Who I love everything they do because they always look like they're announcing the Hunger Games. Like, <laughs> it's just fantastic. But they were basically saying, like, you know, this is you get one or two Olympics and the rest of your life is trying to recreate that magic. And that yeah. really stuck with me. Um, is a kind of a crazy thing to think about and something that most normal, most non-Olympic, most people never think about or never deal with. It's very true. Yeah. So, no, I just, I think the biggest thing to just come out of this Olympics is how much our mental health matters. And mm-hmm. I think that's the thing that we translate this the most back to the workplace yeah. is like, at the end of the day, you're never going to perform at your top if you don't take care of your mental health. Yeah. And I think in some ways it's easier to think about in the workplace because there's, there's sure a physical aspect to showing up and getting into work, but it's not the same. A lot of it is just the mindset, the headspace to things like that. And you know, the working hard or the hours you work are, are a lot different than the time, the effectiveness you can have. Like, mm-hmm. I know when I started my career in New York, there are a lot of jobs, people were working 18 hour days. And I always thought, how do you get anything done in an 18 hour day? And the thing is, you probably don't. Um, so yeah. it's just, you know, it's, it's interesting kind of visualizing that effectiveness. And I'm glad that just these things can be more and more normalized that, yeah, like if your head's not right, very bad things can happen. Yeah. And it's just as important, if not more than, you know, uh, an ankle, right? Or limping along, but it's tougher to see. Everyone saw Carrie Strug limping and her trainer call it carrying her and all of that. And now mm-hmm. it's an iconic moment, but should it be to your point? Like, yeah. you know. Like, I think a lot of us just need to look at it is like, what we want, do we want to see a young child suffer? Like at the end of the day, that's, yeah. she's 24. Like, yeah, she's not a young child, but if she does it, a 16 year old might do it or an 18 year old might do yeah. it because they think that's what they have to do. Yeah, I mean, you think of the pressures too. There was in the Olympic diving, the gold medalist who set a record for China was 14 years old, absolutely Mm -hmm. amazing. And they were saying that one of the reasons she was excited to get onto the Olympic team is the money she would get to send to her mother for her mother's treatment. I forget what exactly it's for, but like that's a lot of pressure on a 14 year old. Yeah. Yeah. It's not not a low amount of, of stress. No. No. So yeah, it's, I I think it's important to kind of have a glass wide open with, with how you're looking at this. I mean, will I still watch the Beijing Olympics? Yeah, probably. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very excited for the next one. And I think it's going to be interesting to see just how they change everything, how they do things. And I think even even the U S team is having this like challenge of you know, the sprinter who got kicked off the team for smoking marijuana in a state that it was legal. Yeah. Yeah. They had other, other people on other teams were able to come to the Olympics um, for things that were much worse in some cases. So it was yes. just the consistency. All of that is, is, is tough to, to rationalize going forward. So we'll see, but to end this favorite Olympic moment, not just this Olympic, any Olympics. Oh gosh. That, that's a big question. So I think my favorite Olympic moment from this Olympics that I recently watched was actually watching the British men dive synchronized diving. Tom Daly. Yeah. Tom Daly, just watching Tom Daly perform and their excitement of like, he lost the last Olympics and winning it this time. And then all uh, beautiful, beautiful. And then after when he was knitting like between rounds. Yeah. He's like knitting for his son. Yeah. Well, that's also, I think, you know, a a good way to end things because he was talking about being a dad, being a husband is a lot more important than the things with the Olympics. And you could tell his mindset was very different. And then, and the individuals, he won bronze and just truly was happy and celebrated and pumped about Mm -hmm. it. And like, it's just nice to see 
kind of that mindset, but that comes with maturity. I mean, he's been an Olympian for 13 years or whatever it was. So like a long you know, period of time, it takes, it takes time to normalize it and get there. Same with someone like Alice and Felix. I remember I was little watching the winter Olympics, and it was the downhill skiing. And there was this guy who was like, won a ton of medals, Herman Meyer from, I think, Austria, the Hermanator. And he was going <laughs> around a corner at like 70 miles an hour and an edge gave out or something. And he, flew he cartwheeled over he flew over both fences like i had to have gone a quarter of a mile in the air and then the announcer said one of the single dumbest things i still remember it uh he went well at least he's landing in that nice fluffy snow oh dear after like taking up the fences and flying through the air at 70 miles an hour i mean uh, i guess he, he wasn't he wasn't like terribly injured but yeah it was yeah it was something. Yeah. So I, I just, that just stuck with me as a, as a memorable moment, not in the, <laughs> yeah. So. No, that makes sense. Well, I guess we'll have to do this again in the winter for the winter Olympics, but um, yes. curious to get anyone's thoughts on the Olympics favorite event. Um, you know, always, always fun to talk Most about. Your event that you love. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, dressage. <laughs> no, I don't I actually don't watch dressage. I watched a little bit of horse jumping. Bruce Springsteen's daughter was in it, so. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, so. Anyways, thank you for going down this rabbit hole of Summer Olympics uh, with me. This was a lot of fun. Of course. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks, Till next week. Till next week.